Hey, thanks for stopping by the shop today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little sequence of all the little clips of all the little things I've been doing on the lathe. I really love working on this thing. But the one common thing in all those clips is this chuck key. I have to use this for every part that I put in and take out of the lathe. And so it gets used a lot. It came with the lathe, so it's getting pretty worn out. So today, I think what I'm gonna do, take a break from the fidget parts, and I'm gonna make a new chuck key. So stick around, I'll show you how I do it. All right, well, the first thing I'm gonna need to do is find some metal for this. I'm gonna go through my stockpile here. I've got a lot of small pieces. Some are upcycled pieces of uh, printers, uh, some are scrap, and uh, some are cut off from some previous projects of uh, metal that I bought from some suppliers, some local, some online. Um, if you're interested where I get some of my metals from, I'll have some links down below for you, so check that out later. Well, I found a couple of nice sized pieces, and of course I didn't label it when I put it away last time, so I don't know exactly what it is. I found something interesting that I think I'm going to use for the crossbar. It's an old axle from a hose cart <laughs> that I trashed a while ago and I saved the axle for just a purpose like this. So now I know I'm starting with a 5 16 diameter crossbar and a 3 quarter inch piece for the main body. I can start working on the CAD. So the square end of this key is the most important part. So I really couldn't go back to the old one and measure it because that was kind of worn out. So I went to the chuck itself, measured the width and the depth of that hole. I want a nice snug fit on this new one, so I was very careful with those measurements. Well, I figured there was at least three ways I could connect this crossbar to the main body. Uh, one would be a press fit, another one would be like a permanent pin I would put through it, but I like things that are removable, so I decided to go with a set screw in the top of it. I use Rhinoceros for most of my CAD work, but it doesn't have a very strong drawing module. I really like the one that's in Fusion 360, so that's what I did. I exported from Rhino and I brought it into Fusion 360 and did my shop drawings. Well, I think it's time to stop looking at pictures and start cutting some metal, so let's do it. Even though this is a really simple project, it's given me a lot of practice with my accuracy. I'm also learning more about machining operations. For example, I went ahead and added this extra temporary quarter of an inch at the end just for my live center to hold the work. Now I can mount it back in the lathe chuck and trim off the end and finish it. Now it's time to do the lathe operations on the large end of the body. The first thing I needed to do was trim off a little bit of excess, about 30 thousandths of an inch. My design specifies a large chamfer on the top end. I also went ahead and eased the edges here because this is the part that's going to contact the palm of my hand. A new habit for me personally is drilling holes in multiple stages. I used to just grab the drill size that I needed and drill the hole. But by starting out with a smaller drill, especially a center drill, you can get a really good accurate start and then move up to the actual size drill that you want for the hole. In this case, it's a 7 32 of an inch drill bit. That's the standard specification for quarter 20 threads in steel. You actually can't see it in this shot, but I actually took a Sharpie and I marked the drill bit for the depth that I wanted this hole to be. I chamfered the edge of this hole for a couple of reasons. It makes it look nice, but it also helps the tap get started. If you look close here, you'll notice that I'm using my live center in the back of the tap holder. That helps keep it aligned with the hole as I uh, turn this manually. I did a little test fit here. I didn't want to take it out of the lathe chuck until I was sure that the threads were nice and clean. While the lathe work is done on this part, time to move over to the mill. Well, this will be the first time I get a chance to use one of my new indexing blocks. 
The set that I have accepts 5C collets. I found that the 5C format is very popular for work holding. My new lathe chucky just so happens to have a half inch diameter in the center. How about that? By clamping this in the mill vise and then registering it to the edge of the jaws, I should be able to get some pretty precise cuts. With a quick double check of the diameter and then edge finding the end and the side, I was able to locate the part within the X and Y coordinates of the machine. Because I never did a machining operation like this before, I decided to take some precautions. So my idea was to take off 30 thousandths of an inch of each side and then take a test measurement. Well, I gotta tell you, my precautionary procedure sure did pay off because I started out with 3 eighths of an inch, which is uh, 375 thousandths. I thought I was taking 60 thousandths off and uh, I actually took 75 thousandths off. So good thing I checked. Now because I'm shooting for a final size of 275 thousandths, I'm going to move the Y in 12 thousandths and that should reduce the overall by 24, which should still keep me in the safe zone. Let's see if it works. Okay, check it out. This is the beauty of these collet blocks. Take it out, turn it 90 degrees, put it back in. And then I just use a parallel to reference it to the edge of the vice jaws and we're ready to go. At this point, I was feeling pretty confident. I'm not sure why, but I made the gutsy move to uh, go ahead and cut all four sides. So I wonder how close I got. I want to give a quick shout out to Banggood. They provided me with these collet blocks. Uh, not only did I get the square one, but there's a hexagon. I'm really looking forward to using this on another project really soon. These are very versatile work holding fixtures. Uh, they can be used for holding round stock even in a drill press. So if you're interested, I've got uh, links down below in the description along with some discount codes. So uh, check them out. All right, here we go. The moment of truth. Oh, look at that. Four tenths under, not too bad. Time to flip it around and do the other end. Another advantage to using this collet block is that even though I flipped the part around, my y-axis is still zeroed. So I just need to use the edge finder to find the end of the part, which would give me my new x position. I'm going to be drilling the hole for the crossbar to go through, and my drawing specifies how far down that hole is from the top of the part. So if I have that location, then I can move the proper distance. Okay, watch this. This is a great example of why a pilot hole is important. Did you see how much that drill bit was wiggling? If it didn't have a pilot, that thing would be all over the place. I'll just add a little chamfer to the edge of these holes and this part's done. I'm back over at the lathe to start this crossbar and I just realized this rod is in way worse shape than I thought. I'm going to have to cut off the first two inches of this because it's pretty worn. I'm drilling this with a center drill because I'm going to have to use a tailstock on this piece. It's only 5 16 of an inch diameter and 4 inches long, so it's going to need to be supported on both ends. This old axle shaft is already at the finished size, so I'm trying to clean it up without taking off much material at all. So instead of using the cutter, I'm going to have to use emery paper instead. Well that worked fine, now it's time for my favorite lathe tool, the ball cutter. 